Let's start this on One Piece Chapter 1000 with five of the worst generation, Law, Zoro, Luffy, Killer, and Kid standing on top of the Skull Dome in Onigashima with Big Mom and Kaido. Hear me out as I make a pretext on who I think the Nine Shadows are and how they will eventually form to bring out the Dawn and open Wano's borders. We first learn of Toki's prophecy through Kiyoshiro in his manner in chapter 919, the prophecy goes like this. You are the moon, unaware of the dawn. May your purpose be fulfilled, and cast nine shadows on the night woven of twenty years, and you shall know the brilliance of the dawn. Then on the same in the next chapter, we get introduced with the grave of the nine red scabbards. So immediately, one will infer that the Nine Shadows are the Nine Red Scabbards. In Chapter 932, in the banquet held by Orochi, we hear about the prophecy again. We were slowly introduced to the first six Red Scabbards namely, Kinemon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Inwarashi, Nekomamushi, and Okiku. The remaining three scabbards namely Denjiro, Kawamatsu, and Ashura Doji were introduced later in the story. We first meet Ashura Doji who is now known as Shutenmaru of the Mount Atama Thieves. In Chapter 922, we see Kaido remembering Ashura Doji in Odin's execution. Two chapters later, we meet Kuwamatsu in Udon Prison which is currently being guarded by Kaido's Beast Pirates after Luffy got defeated. Kaido knows the Nine Red Scabbards all too well on Odin's flashback as he saw them being carried by Odin for one hour. But things get complicated from here on. In Odin's flashback, we learn that there were actually ten retainers and that includes Kiku's brother Izo and Shinobu wanted to join them during the fight with Kaido. Before the raid in Onigashima, there were only seven samurais in the port namely Kinemon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Kiku, Kawamatsu, Inwarashi and Ashura Doji. Then as soon as they embark on the boat, Kanjiro introduced himself as Kanjiro Kurozumi, the traitor. Denjiro, Nekomamushi and Izo finally appeared during the raid in Onigashima. And then finally in Chapter 987, Oda hyped up everyone by introducing the final nine red scabbards with Kaido on a moonlit night on top of the Skull Dome. Thirteen chapters later in Chapter 1000, the scabbards fall. But is this really what Oda has planned from the beginning? I think not, the scabbards just like the grave markers are simply placeholders for the real nine shadows to come. The Straw Hat Pirates At first glance, it is easy to assume that the shadows of the prophecy may also pertain to the Straw Hat Pirates. Prior to Jimbei joining, there were only nine Straw Hat Pirates. They are Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Nami, Chopper, Robin, Brook, and Frankie. However, this proved to be impossible as soon as Jimbei joined the raid in Onigashima and announcing himself as the 10th Straw Hat. Also Oda has not given any clues that he was pertaining to the Straw Hat pirates that will bring the dawn to Wano. The 11 Supernovas Chapter 498 entitled Eleven Supernova gave us the first introduction of the rookie pirates who were in Sabo di Archipelago at the same time. The Eleven were Luffy, Zoro, Eustace Kid, Trafalgar Law, Jewelry Bonnie, Capone Beige, Killer, Yuruge, Basil Hawkins, X Drake, and Scratchman Apu. Throughout Luffy's journey in the New World, we were always updated on the whereabouts of the supernovas. In Odin's flashback, Odin and Toki discussed several times about people from the New World that will stir up and will cause massive war. Here, Odin tells that the primary figures of this great war will muscle their way to the New World and they are the ones who can strike down Kaido. 
Odin did not tell Toki that the nine red scabbards will be the one to strike down Kaido. Then in chapter 999, Yamato and Ace discussed the figures in the new world. Note how Oda specifically involves two names here, Cavendish and Gang Beije. Cavendish is now part of the Grand Fleet while Beije is a supernova. After the events of Dress Rosa and Whole Cake Island, six of the supernovas, X Drake, Apu, Hawkins, Kid, Killer and Law, found their way in Wano Kuni. Is this coincidence just like it happened in Sabo di Archipelago? At this time, we have eight supernovas in Wano if we add Luffy and Zoro. Who is the last one? Vivre card. In One Piece Chapter 1000, Oda reintroduced us once again to the Vivre card. Of all the chapters to introduce the Vivra card, why does it have to be in Chapter 1000? We were also introduced again to the five supernovas about to fight Big Mom and Kaido. In Alabasta, Ace gave Luffy his Vivra card but did not give any details on how to use it except saying that it will let them meet again. Then in Thriller Bark, Lola explained the importance of the Vivra card which is also known as the Life card. Lola gave a piece of the paper to Nami so they can meet her mom to get help in the new world. In Whole Cake Island, Nami met Lola's twin sister Shafan. Shafan helped the Straw Hats escape by baking the cake with Pudding and Sanji to pay back the Straw Hats for helping Lola. Capone Gang Beije, Oh My Family Gang Beijay's Oh My Family is probably one of the longest cover stories in One Piece. The cover story ran for 37 chapters which started from Beijay's adventures after they left Whole Cake Island then Chiffon, Pound, and Lola reunited and finally Lola got married with Godi. The Nine Shadows in Toki's Prophecy now to recap, Toki's prophecy says that there will be nine shadows who will brace their way to the new world and will be the ones to bring down Kaido. We have eight supernovas in Wano. Five on top of Onigashima. Apu lost the antidote for the virus and X Drake already joined the alliance of Luffy. All that is left is Basil Hawkins to defect from Kaido. In Yamato's flashback with Ace, Ace specifically mentioned four names, three of which are now in Wano including his brother, Luffy. Therefore, the ninth shadow could be Capone Gang Beije. Now the question is how will Beije return to the story? Remember Basil Hawkins making a prediction on the chances of a certain man surviving until tomorrow? What if I tell you that there is a possibility why Oda made the 37 chapters long cover story was to prepare Shafan and Beije to meet Lola who has Big Mom's Vivra card? And what if there are signs of Big Mom losing tonight through the Vivra card? This will prompt Lola and Shafan to go to Wano Kuni following the Vivra card bringing Beije with them. Do you also remember Katakori's last words to Luffy after he accepted defeat? He asked Luffy if he will be back someday to topple Big Mom to which Luffy says he will. Therefore, the Nine Shadows will be complete. Regarding Jewelry Bonnie and Yoroaj as supernovas. Oda has not made any hints yet about them appearing in Wano and what significance they will play but it may be for a later arc. I hope you enjoyed my theory, let's look forward into the future and see if we can guess correctly the nine shadows of Toki's prophecy.